train. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got my glasses on. It's, uh, and my guest is Dr. Paul Swingle, who has invented these glasses and produces them. And that's not why he's here because of the glasses. He's here because he is the savior of parent after parent after parent, wife after wife after wife, husband after husband after husband, and uh, even best friends and worst enemies. And uh, what does he do? Well, he fixes your brain. Now, what the heck do these glasses do? I've got these on this. What, what is, which one's this one? That's balancing your frontal cortex. Balancing and my cortex. That's right. And the uh, lights that are going by are <coughs> in the uh, mood enhancing range. You know, uh, for people that use light boxes for uh, seasonal affective disorder and so forth, the uh, light frequencies are uh, in the 440 to 480 nanometer range and that's about where those are. Now would that but, be the same see, one as this one? Yep, yeah, it's very uh, convenient because you put them on when you get up in the morning and you just leave them on while you're preparing breakfast and so forth and so on. So I can walk around with these ones as opposed to Bingo. I guess I could walk around holding this in my hand, that's too. That's right, but I? that's not the one that you use for seasonal affective disorder. You have to uh, push the back a couple of times and get it to so it's okay, constant. Okay, for, so for seasonal affective disorder, one that's more. not it. There it is. That's the one. I want the solid light on for it. That's correct, yes. And, and then, I can wear these and, and, and then, read a book or anything. That's right. And then just before you uh, are ready to hit the road running, <clears throat> Uh, you put on that program that you had on before that's moving back like and that. forth. That balances the frontal cortex and you'll be okay. sharp as a tack. So how long should I have the solid one on? <clears throat> Half an hour, an hour? Yeah, uh, get out, you know, as soon as you get up in the morning because the uh, light for sad is effective very early in the morning. That's when you want to put it on. As soon as you uh, get out of bed. Sort of like you're sleeping outside half hour. and the sun came up. That's right. Something exactly like what it so is. Because what we're doing is we're restoring ourselves to our original deal before we had houses and tents and so on. And before we uh, lived in uh, Vancouver Coast. instead of Tucson. Before we lived in Vancouver. <laughs> it's funny, I'm doing a Tucson tax return. Two of them here right now. <clears throat> Good stuff. So this one is the SAD light. No, the solid one. The solid one's the SAD light. Right. This one is, no, this one's faster again. So now what that's for is for when you get the... Uh, <clears throat> Start to get to be my age. I'm just watching this in the screen is funnier than heck. Yeah. When you get to be my age, uh, you have to keep your alpha frequencies fast. And the way you do that is wear those while you're reading, oh, for maybe five minutes a day. And it uh, helps prevent non Alzheimer's dementia. Well, that's a good thing to do. And last week was when we talked, of course, about Alzheimer's and age related dementia. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you happen to be watching this live and you want to give us a phone call, the number is 1-866-980-0499. And I think he's even actually got it up on the screen. So you can phone in and ask Paul Swingle a question. Now, if you've got a pen and paper around and you want to uh, call Paul's office afterwards or something, I mean, not later on tonight, but if you happen to be watching this in uh, archives, then his phone number is 604-608-0444. His office is at 1190 Melville Street in Vancouver. And people come there from all around the world. That's what they do. They, uh, I remember one time when I had the show Ingram on Rogers Television, we had people that came from Bermuda and Walla Walla, Washington and Toronto. And they were from all over the place. And uh, you brought some of your patients down, that the parents were happy to have them come down and talk about it. Mm -hmm. And the reason is the parents were happy with what you do. All right. So we're supposed to talk about adoption issues and oppositional behavior and... Conduct disorders. Conduct and disorders. Depression in children and emotional... Depression. You know, so problems in kids. Where are we going to go from there? Now, I've got a couple of testimonials that have come in for you, and they're not nearly as good as my testimonial. But... I have never had anybody say that what you did was a waste of time. It doesn't matter how little they did, they got something out of it. So again, because somebody might not have watched the other four programs we did, tell us what you do. What I do is really 
Quite simple. <clears throat> what I do is have a look at the electrical activity coming from the brain. And what we're looking for are areas of inefficiency in the way the brain's processing information. Now, can I use my analogy? It's like a, spar a car with spark plugs and one of the wires isn't as good or something? If you insist. Well, I like that because isn't that what you're saying? That I mean, I put it on a scope and it shows, you know, I got seven things going like this and one's going do, 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 do or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, all, all those guys can understand the scope on a car, right? So, sure. But you've got 19 places that you do, not eight cylinders. Yeah, the metaphor is okay. Uh, basically, you're looking for something like that where it's not, it's not uh, functioning at an efficient level. Uh, and we know what the what the uh, brain waves should look like at various places in the brain. <clears throat> so when we see one that's outside range, so the brain is uh, not functioning in an efficient fashion, then I know what symptoms are associated with that. That's why I don't ask people why they come to see me. Well, I remember you said when you did my first one, you looked at it and you said, well, if this was up here, you'd be an addictive personality. If this was over here, you'd be depressed. And if this was... And it was fascinating. Mm -hmm. So if I had something that didn't turn off. But I think it was <laughs> Not chatty. your brain. Mr. Chatty, yeah. Okay. So you can tell that something is wrong with the brain, yeah. and you can fix it. Yes, well, the best analogy there is a gym. You know, you uh, have an area of the body that's weak, uh, you go, and your trainer will say, well, to strengthen this part of the body, you want to do these kinds of exercises. And that brings the body into balance, and everything sorts itself out. <clears throat> A similar kind of metaphor with the brain. If we find an area that's uh, not functioning efficiently, then we use several techniques to normalize that brain function. And the three technique, three, three general classes of techniques, one is biofeedback for the brain. <clears throat> That's the, uh, the type of uh, treatment that most people are familiar with, or at least have heard of, in which we set it up so that when the brain is doing what we want it to do, <clears throat> the person hears a tone or sees something move on a computer monitor. If it's a kid, we set it up so they're playing a video game with their brain. Or I have electric trains, and I can, you know, the kid can make you the electric hook trains. Up these electrodes, which That's are non-invasive. Right. They don't. Hmm. Uh, although I have to admit, and I'm going to remember that, if you happen to be bald like I am or Paul is, and you got some hardened skin there from the sun, uh, Mari actually scraped that down a little bit to to make it uh, record better. So to get the proper impedance, <clears throat> the uh, a bald head is more difficult to work with than a head that has hair well, on it. Well, but yes. much sexier. Oh, really? Sign, okay. Well, sign of high <laughs> intestinal testosterone. Right? <laughs> well, you should agree with this, if not me. You know? so, what the heck? You know what the good Lord said when he was making the heads, don't you? Don't know this one? No. He said, that's a good one, that's a good one, that's a good one. The ones you didn't like, you put hair on top. I see, okay. <laughs> anyway, so you okay. can fix these, you've yeah. put the electrodes, you get impedance, and you can, make, by a kid thinking straight, he can make the electric train move. That's right, or you know, a video game on the computer monitor. The second class of treatments are the brain drivers, and they were primarily no, developed... The kid, or the patient, could be an adult, could be a 60-year-old man or a 70-year-old woman, they have to participate in that first one. That's right. The first one is volitional. You're focused on the screen or you're focused on the electric trains or whatever, and you are trying deliberately to modify brain activity to yeah. make the train move or you know the icons move on the okay. screen. Number two. Number two, brain driving it can be a non-volitional procedure in which <clears throat> we set it up so that we measure a particular aspect of brain functioning. Based on that measurement, we stimulate with light, sound, microamperage stimulation, EMF fields, and so forth, to nudge the brain into more normal functional ranges. So is that?